basically uh, probably about seven, eight months ago. Uh, do you think that, um, I don't know that you were any other clubs in this kind of role, do you think that Liverpool are one of the clubs that put the most effort into the area of education and welfare for, for Academy age? That's a good question, that. Uh, I think that every club will do what they see fit to, to look after their players to the best of their ability. I think the model that we have here at Liverpool uh, and the way we work with our players is what, in terms of the education and welfare, that's what I believe and, and what the people who work in that area believe to be the best way to look after young, young children and young adults. Uh, and I think it's a mixture of getting on with the individuals through humour, through respect, uh, showing them the right way, uh, catching them when they're doing things incorrectly and catching them when they're doing things right and sort of moulding them in what we believe is is not only going to be a Liverpool, you know, a ch help them have the chance of being a, the best they can be as a Liverpool footballer but when they leave here have, have a good chance of having a career as, and being a decent person really. So. You know, I would say that we're, you know we're, we're good at what we do. We're always looking to improve. Uh, how other clubs work with other players, how, with, with their, their players, is, is really down to what they do. But the model that we use is is not taken from any other club. It's what we deem to be relevant for, for Liverpool boys, Liverpool players. Do you think that um, do you have problems dealing with parents as well sometimes that they might not think? what you're thinking is the best, you know, I mean you must have quite close links with the parents as well. Yeah, we, we do and I think some parents you'll, you'll deal with more than others, some parents will be relaxed, some parents will want to know regularly what's going on, some parents uh, won't and, and that's their right as, as a parent to, to, to have that involvement. Uh, I think really that the most important thing for a parent to do is just trust the club uh, and the academy and knowing that the staff that were working here with, with, the, with the children and with the, with the older players uh, are experienced with what they do. We, we've done it for a long time and, and just you know trust us in what we're doing and, and with the decisions that we make. And sometimes it's, it's difficult because a player's journey can be very, uh, it can be very up and down and, and it, it's not very smooth and it, it, it sometimes can be where you know, a boy in his younger ages from 9 to 11 can be doing very, very well and then his transition to 11 aside can can have the journey to, to have a little bit of a down, uh, a down sort of period when we know and we're waiting for the boy to then pick up again and then as he reaches 13, 14, 15, whatever, the boy will pick up and, and, and perform to the level that we can. Also, a boy can perform really well and then get to 13, 14 and then, you know, Maturity and, and the body growing can can kick in, and you know you can players can suffer from from playing time, and you know for example one example is lack of coordination it can be something with growth, uh, and again we're experienced at working with boys in that, and parents just have to trust that we know what we're doing. It, it, it can be that you know for the whole of the lads' experience at Liverpool, he could have played pretty much almost every game, and then you get to the 14, and his body's growing and. You know his game. We have to wait a little bit, and his games maybe deteriorate a little bit more than what they used to. And the parents have to understand that, you know, and trust what we're doing. And I think we're very open with our parents. We have a good open relationship. Uh, they're able to come and speak to us whenever they want, uh, and that's from Frank, Rodolfo, uh, all the way through the age groups, through Gary, uh, Michael, Beale, and Steve Torpy with the nine to sixteens sort of coordinators in their respective areas. Uh, and you know we're we're honest and, and upfront with the parents really. And Brian Clockham told us that you, you do quite a bit of work with them on things like Twitter and social networks. Do yeah. you feel do you feel that's getting more and more important now with with players, especially some of the teenagers? Yeah, it's massive. It's, it's you know it's, social media is you know I, I think that when I used to go and watch Liverpool play years ago and you stand on the cop and you know if if you thought a player didn't have a great game you, you could shout it. And you go home, and you, as you were going home, you talk to your mates about it on the bus or on the train. But now you can literally pick your mobile phone up and just just text that person abuse if they haven't performed well. And that that's that applies with with not just the first team; it applies with the 21s, with the 18s, and lower down. Because what you've got to remember is that you know the all every 21s game, every 18s game is on TV, and the exposure that these boys have is massive. And they have a responsibility to behave and use 
Twitter, Facebook and any other social media site you know, maturely and, and understand that playing for Liverpool requires them to, to do that in the right way and, and you know, social media is only going to get bigger, it's only going to get more, you know, I, I, there, was, there was something someone told me the other day called Instagram, it, it, I'd never heard of that before in my life, photo the photo thing and yeah. you know, the, we, we have someone who works closely with the club who's fantastic with regards to social media, he's, he's a solicitor and he works with the club and also, you know, famous stars in media and TV and, and he works very closely with us and I speak to him, this is how big social media is, I probably speak to him five, six times a week, you know, and that, that's on a slow week, you know, uh, so I'll speak to him and he, he will monitor our players from the very youngest boys all the way through to, to the 21s and first team. He'll monitor all our players and if there's an issue, he'll ring me, we'll put a, put a working group together, whether that be Frank, uh, myself, Clive, uh, and, and, and then obviously the specialist, and we will, just, we will speak about what we need to do to, to, to basically deal with that situation. And, you know, for example, if something happens uh, in the first team, which is a very, very high profile, we have to monitor that our boys are commenting or not commenting at all, which is what we want around a, a subject. Hence, you know, the, the incident that happened on Sunday. You know, we, we have to monitor that the boys, you know, don't basically comment anything inappropriate or comment anything at all. So, in answer to your question, it's, it's massive and it's going to get bigger and it takes up a lot of our time. But it doesn't matter if you're working in a the school; they have the same problems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, the other side of that as well is. So as the legal side is the kind of confident side, is it? Yeah. Do, do you feel they get affected because you can get a hundred tweets telling them how bad they were, and they can end up dwelling on that rather than the fact that they actually played quite well and had a few decent comments too. Yeah, it's a good point. One of the boys in the under 18s came up to me the other day, and some random person had basically just tweeted them that that he was rubbish, he was awful, he was the worst player he's ever seen. The lads come to me and he's he's gutted. My answer to him was, don't be on Twitter then. You know, I mean, obviously you, you, you console him, but to a point, you know, if you're going to have a social media network site which allows anyone around the world to comment on you, that that's that's the nature of the beast, you know. And he, you know, we, we we basically showed him how to block this person and re respond, not to respond, and, and all those things. But unfortunately, you know, when those things happen, it, it you know it, that's the nature of the beast. I mean, one example is when Jerome Sinclair, we, we knew he was in the first team squad before it got announced. Uh, we didn't know he was going to make his debut, that obviously just happened by the manager dur during the game. But we, we looked, his Twitter site was something like, I think it was 5,000. By the end of the game, it was touching 20,000. You know, and this is you know what the lads have to understand. Yeah, I think I remember him, I think I remember him, he may have actually even put a hint on Twitter actually. Yeah. He was in the squad, and as you yeah. said, when there's only 5,000, it's not really noticed. No. It's well intrigued in the Well, I mean, it's like with, you know, for example, uh, the, the boy who's under 16 captain this year for England, Jerome, I say Jordan Rossiter, you know, uh, his profile is, is in, through Twitter, it just got, oh yeah, it's just gone up and it's gone up. And obviously, you know, when you've got people like, you know, you've got Robbie Fowler who would tweet something like that, straight away someone looks at that and goes, right, I'm going to see who this player is. And then he's playing for the TV, so he's playing for the, the under 18s on TV, he's been in the next gen. People want to know, and I'm going to be honest with you, you know, when we sign a new player, I, I'll, I'll go on social media, I'll, I'll look at Twitter, I'll look at Facebook, and we'll research the player and we'll see what type of person you're getting because. One of the first conversations that they have when they join the club is they sit in my office and we get it up on the screen and we, we talk about what they're doing and what they can't do. Yeah. And it's important because you know they might come from a lower club to Liverpool and the, you know, that Daniel Trickett-Smith is, is, is another example where you know, crew have got a fantastic uh, sort of history of producing players. He's come to Liverpool from Crewe and his, his tweets just went up and up and up. And I said to him, this is what you have to understand, this is a responsibility of playing for Liverpool. Yeah, Does, did he get, is, is that, um, when they're walking around town and things like that, do you think, do you get bothered much these days? Or? I always remember a couple of years ago, uh, Raheem and I were walking through Liverpool one and we had to, it was something silly, like he had a, we had an awards evening uh, and he was still at school and we had to go and buy a pair of shoes. So we were walking through Liverpool once to go to get, to get some shoes for, for this do. And he got stopped by about three or four people in the street and he was like, you know, he couldn't believe that people knew who he was. Said, well, this is what happens, you know, people will recognise you. And uh, 
it's the same with other players. You know, they they they, they kind of are at sort of, sort of first a little bit in disbelief, but it's the way it is. I mean, Rotto and I were walking with with Clive. Uh, we'd we'd gone for a, on Friday. We'd gone to the FA Youth Cup game against Chelsea, and the team were obviously resting. We'd gone for a little walk uh, around Twickenham and that. And we were walking back to the hotel, and this random guy just stopped us in the middle of nowhere and just just knew Rodolfo. And it's like he and he had it on his on his phone, and he's got a photo of Rodo, and and you're there going, you know, this is, you know, but that's just what fans have got access to all the time. Yeah. yeah. Which which by the way, on the flip side is a good thing because you can advertise and get good messages out there for charities and that. But on the flip side, you know, if you use it incorrectly, it's poor. You know, it's it's difficult to 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 stop negative press getting out there, which the players have to know. You, you just mentioned press then, do you think that um, <clears throat> the, the media in general, especially maybe the, the likes of the, the tabloid ish, should be a bit more responsible in regards to the social media, especially with kids under the age mm. of eight, you know, 15, 16, 17, because they're the day, as well as, you, as well as you try and manage it, mm. is it kids in the alley yeah, yeah. mistakes? you're right, yeah. You know, I, I, I just think, I know it hasn't particularly happened at Liverpool, apart from John Joe, but we're not, we're not, uh, where they make one mistake mm. and then they fill in. These are 15 year old kids, even going back to that kid that runs away from football, who was made to quit a job as a drugs kid, you know, the, mm. the drugs thing last week. You know, they, you, you're dealing with, with children, I mean, yeah. and obviously you make them aware of that. How would, you, how, how would you deal with that pastorally internally? You know, if something did happen where the likes of the mayor or anything like that, yeah. they're picking it up and trying to drive it. Yeah, but the, you know, the, the paper, I don't think the papers are bothered about what age what the, the person is and you're right and I think what you're speaking to there is you know you're thinking like we think you know children will make mistakes but you're dealing with us with you're dealing with an industry where it's just about selling papers and selling stories and quite frankly I just don't think they care and, and I think that our boys have to understand that you know things can escalate we, we've had one or two scenarios here where and listen you know we're, we're not so where our boys haven't done something wrong but you know there might have been a uh, background with a player's family where you know papers want to get hold of that and there's been situations where you know we've been made aware that a paper wants to release a story and we've that's been blocked it's been stopped you know but these are the things that you know people will go on facebook let's just say you're a player you're a talented player and you're his dad right they'll go on your facebook and they'll look for photos they'll look for anything just to get Everything they can, and you know, the, you, the boys. You've got controls for that. The, Sorry. You've got internal controls within the club, and you can to try and deal with that. Kind yeah, of I mean, the, we, we look at the security, and we look at what you know, what, how secure their pages are, how you know, how, who can access, who their friends are, and the, listen, they're a hundred times better than they were five years ago, but they still need to be improved. But five years ago, when we did the first presentation, it was awful. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw my daughter's Facebook page after she went to uni. I don't want to, yeah. you know, it, it's, it can, it's kind of shocking. And I, and I think it's someone in, in the spotlight. Um, and it's not necessarily to say the players and mates, yeah. it's, it's the family and that. So it must be, it must be difficult. Yeah. Um, I thought, I've just got a couple of questions. For yeah, no problem. Um, some of the hypocrisy of it, I mean, this is just the hypocrisy that was read in. You were with it. I mean, you had to see the other side of it. To see the, the way you want these kids, that was, you know. What do you mean, sorry? No, no, this is off. No, yeah. so the, the hypocrisy of some of the press, especially with the mayor, you know, the likes of the mayor, particularly be back in the drum for, you know, these are kids, you know, Britain, broken Britain and all that stuff. Yeah. And then they'll have to be persecuted, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what, what, I'd say about, what I'd say about this place as well is that, like, when, when a child comes here, no matter how long they stay for, they're in a disciplined environment where they're to keep fit, they, they hang around with good, good people, good role models, and no matter what happens, I would, if I had a son, I would want my boy to be in this environment because, you know, when he comes out of it, he, he, no matter what you say, he's been in a good environment, and when, when, whenever that ends, he's been in a good structured environment which helps the, the boy. And, you go and uh, I did something with Bill Bygroves the other day at uh, Liverpool Ambassadors Group and we had some ambassadors sat in front of me, some young, I mean we did a question and answer and uh, Bill said to me, you know, what's one bit of advice you can give to him before you go and I said that, you know, what you have to understand as young people, I said, you are actually breaking the norm because a lot of people your age are lying in bed, smoking weed, 
you know, drinking, hanging around street corners, you're here trying to do something. And those types of people are outnumbered by the ones who, who don't really can't be bothered. Do you know what I mean? And it, in this environment, I think we're able to, to, to give a real good ground into an individual. And hopefully, but I, I agree with you, you know, young people today just get hammered, hammered, you know, but it takes a strong person to go through, get above all that and, and find the way. Um, I can't speak. You. you must be very different. Both yourselves and Evan, to be fair to them, take um, the, the, um, the approach, the, the education of the kids, the pastoral approach, very, very seriously. Mm. You must be very proud to be part of that when it seems, without naming any other teams, that for the past 10, 15 years, other teams have maybe made a token effort and like a, for a box tick and exercise, you know, like, oh, we offer education, we offer this, we offer that. But it strikes me when a couple of times I've been here now, there seems to be, you talk on discipline and guidance, but I've not seen any of the lads here who aren't walking around with a smile on the face. Mm. Is it hard to keep that balance and, and are you proud that you managed to achieve, seemingly managed to achieve that? Yeah, it takes to, you know, it's a good question. I think, I think, you know, the, the, the way that I see, the way that I think that, the, our boys need to behave in a model, okay? The way I think that that is set up, uh, that, that would be, as I said before, it would be different from other clubs if you went there. So obviously, to take this model and, and make people, to take this model here and off the field, instill what we want our play boys to do. And when we're talking education, we're not just talking sitting in a classroom and doing your qualifications, we're talking about the whole aspect of being a footballer. Uh, it takes time to develop. It takes time to uh, to instill that into players, and you're looking minimum of two years before you start to see. And you'll affect some players straight away. You'll affect some players after maybe a year, and you'll never affect some players. Do you know what I mean? But it takes time to get that sort of uh, to get that ethos uh, and that that culture into the players. Now that's not just off the field. It's it's on the field with with the coaching staff and. And everyone around the building, really, it's kind of everyone uh, being consistent with the way they are. The moment you lose that consistency, I think there's a problem. Then the moment you lose that consistency of this is how we want a player to behave at Liverpool, I think that that, that creates problems. Yeah, but at the same time, we were saying, well, the, 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 there seems to be a, a relaxed atmosphere which maybe doesn't fit well with the, the doctrine of you need to follow this. Mm. There doesn't seem to be that iron fist discipline. No, well, 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 it's quite simple, isn't it? It's, it's like you trust we're working very hard to, to some of the staff here. You know, we, we we see the boys more than our families. You know, this is we we give up a massive part of our lives to do the job that we do. And I think if you're willing to give everything you can to help a player develop, then. When you want something back, whether that be turning up on time or working hard and training or not forgetting this to go here, then that surely is how life works, isn't it? If you work hard for someone and you expect something back, it should be done. And I think the boys quite quickly realise that you'll do everything you can for them. But you know what? We now and again want a little bit back. And and I think that's really how it works, really. Where And look, don't get me wrong, if there's an issue and then there's a discipline problem, then it's dealt with. But then And then we move on. But... They're few and far between because I think the boys just kind of get it. Do you, do you find that the boys, when it gets to a point when you said we're well, a lot of them acclimatised, mm. and then you maybe got a player thing that along with you find the boys actually push each other? Yeah, they do. I, I think that they, they, they push each other, but I think the structure in place with. Yeah, and listen, the hardest thing with players, I think, to deal with is managing the fact that, you know, obviously the manager has been fantastic with the players by taking them up there, training with the first team. You know, some are staying there, some have then gone with the 21, some with the 18s. You know, we've had one player who's gone 16, 18s, next gen, first team, 18s, he's played for the 60. You know, but it's having a player to be able to manage that. You know, and he's got to be able to deal with it, and as a staff, that's the, probably the hardest thing is dealing with the player's expectations and if a player has unrealistic ex expectations that sometimes can affect his mood and how he is and, and maybe around the place and I think you've just got to handle that and again that comes from experience of working with boys who are moving up and down through teams but you know going back to your question I think that there is a relaxed, relaxed environment and you, we've got some 
a lot of young men and, uh, and boys here are very respectful towards each other and adults but things like that take time uh, and, and you know long may it continue really you mentioned that you touched down on the next gen mm. how much of a, a learning curve was it for, for the lads did travel to be introduced at maybe a younger age to the traveling to european ways mm. the logistical side of it yeah you know the traveling because I, I know that a lot of it was last year he was traveling for nearly two days yeah, to yeah. get to a game yeah you know, do, you, do you find that that stands them in good stead or is it, is it a hindrance in, the, in their development to, to basically travel so far and yeah. get no, on the road so much? Fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. But one, one of the highlights, the next gen has been one of the real positives of the last couple of seasons for, for, for young players' development. Uh, obviously with the EPPP and the fact that you know we're now playing teams from all over the country, but that, that's... That, that, that's been a good experience because the boys are travelling down on the Friday, staying in the hotel, playing on the Saturday, coming back as it would be. But the next gen to fly, go abroad, stay in a hotel, prepare for the game, play, you know, at, at different temperatures in different stadiums against different types of opposition, it's been a massive learning curve. And that's just something that, you know, can't be offered here. You know, we, we obviously we play different types of teams of different levels and people will play. Uh, certain ways but to go abroad and play against your Barcelona as your sporting Lisbon's you know those types of teams it's fantastic for the players you know and, and if they're gonna if they're gonna be Champions League players and, and, and also get to the first team of Liverpool they've got to be able to not only cope in that environment but also perform to, to, to the level I mean this season we've, we've had quite a young team that's gone and played the next gen considering the teams of our previous years and those yeah, boys. I remember the team that went to Milan, I think he had, I think he had Jerome played, he yeah. he's only just turned 15 and yeah, he yeah. had a couple of 16s in yeah. and, and then said I had a couple of night that basically they're, yeah. they're 19s in. And, yeah. You know, I, I remember once the game was 3-1 but I think he made, the, you could see all evening in that space of 18 minutes, the acclimatised to it. Yeah. Because I think it's one of the top of the first half, you can see the lads yeah. walking around, going, you know what? Yeah, and what you've got to remember as well sometimes, you know, the level is the level sometimes, no matter how good you are, you, you're still 15 yeah. and you're playing against someone 19, the level is the level. You know, it's very rare that someone who's 15 can still produce against 19 year olds, so you know, you have to be, you can't sometimes look at those games and think, oh, you know, we're, you know he's 15, he's 16, like I looked at, uh, you know, we, we, had, we had a very young team against uh, against Chelsea on Friday, you know, and they were a very good side, a strong side, you know. Uh, but we had a young side, and the majority of that team will be able to go again next year. And they're the things, they're the positive things that you have to take out of it. And that's that's one of the things that Rodolfo highlighted and changed him at the end of the game. He's dead right. You know, a very young team, and they can only learn from those experiences.